Welcome to Iron Man Raid Specialist, featuring Quan Man Raid. The goal of this series is to acquire gear and skills to perfect a Raids Willing Specialist account. Every 75 Raids I can go for 1 of 19 upgrades necessary to build this account, ending at 1500 Soul Raids. Please enjoy the series. First raid of the day, I, I ended up getting a purple, so <laughs> here we go, man. Damn, son, another Dragon Hunter. Dude, it, it might beat my Ancestral Hat collection, honestly. Nah, I don't think it's going to be Ancestral Hats, I mean. Seven versus four, none. Chances are a lot better. <gasps> oh my god, I just got back to back? Holy shit. Got to spin for the win, here we go. Arcane, bro, first Arcane in a bit. So while I was away from raids the past year or so, people have figured out some insane strategies involving the scythe that really does speed things up a lot for me at raids now that I've unlocked it and I can use it and have the blood runes for it. So there are two big bosses at raids where the scythe strategies go really well with those bosses. So one is Tecton and the other one is Ohm. So I'm going to quickly cover Tecton. So for Tecton, this strategy is called the scythe walk. It's pretty busted once you learn how to do it. It's pretty hard to learn though, but essentially you go counterclockwise and you're walking around the boss without taking any damage. And you're also not missing any hits. You're pretty much almost tick perfect in most situations with the sight. So you can slam the boss down usually like two to three anvils really consistently. So I've been practicing it, got it down for the most part, and it definitely is speeding up my rates a lot. Super good strap. So the next strategies involve Ohm with the Scythe. There's two main strategies here. One is called 7-3 and the other one's called 7-3 Mage. These are very uh, advanced strategies. Like if you don't already know 4-1, to one, then it's really not going to make much sense. But I'll try to explain it in a way that's uh, at least understandable to most people. But essentially 7-3, the numbers mean that you hit the boss 7 times and the boss hits you 3 times, right? And you're also able to skip specials like the portal, electricity, stuff like that during this method. And the benefit of this method is that I'm able to use the scythe without missing ticks. Because if you try to scythe only, you're going to miss ticks, which is why you do need to use a 4 tick weapon with this method. So essentially, you set a 4 to 1, and that way, you're able to do 4 scythe hits, followed by 3 hits of a different weapon that is 4 ticks. So I use rapier, but obviously lance works. But yeah, doing it this way means that I don't miss ticks with a scythe. So I'm able to do the maximum damage that I can. It's really good for me because I definitely speed up the kills a lot with this strategy. And then the last strategy, the hardest strategy that I've had to learn in raids in general so far, is called 7-3 Mage. It's kind of like 7-3, except that instead of using a 4 tick melee weapon, you're using a trident or a sang staff in between your scythe hits. So the 7-3 mage method only works on the phase before the final head phase because you cannot allow the hands to flinch because you're going to be hitting the mage hand and the melee hand back and forth. But essentially, it's like 7-3 except instead of using 3 hits on the melee hand using a 4-2 weapon, you use 3 hits on the mage hand using like a trine or sang staff. But this method is super effective, even more effective than 7-3, the normal one, because I'm able to exclusively hit the melee hand with the scythe. The scythe has the highest theoretical damage on the hand out of any weapon. But yeah, assuming I land a Warhammer doing this method, I can down the melee hand as fast as theoretically possible, which is insane. And at this point, I've learned it and I've been utilizing it to go for better times. So in this video, we'll be getting a new personal best. It's going to be definitely one of my best speed runs so far on this account at solo rates. So so I've been learning this new blowpipe method that came out maybe like last year or so called the 7 to 0 method is really super good for the head phase because you can do 7 hits with the blowpipe going from left to right without the boss hitting you once. So you're almost doing maximum amount of hits possible except going from the entrance to the middle though as you can see I do have to miss a hit or two. But on the side where the chest is at, I am going for maximum hits. I don't miss anything on that half of the room. So yeah, you definitely need to mark your tiles though. It's really important. Without it, you kind of really can't do this method like consistently. I tried. But yeah, 
it does require you understanding how the head turns work though so you do already have to be fairly versed with the solo rates so once you have that done though mark the tiles as you see in the video and just practice away let me review this ray layout because i think some of you guys are interested in how this works so this is a really nice layout because it's only three bosses and two skilling with agility the other skillings demon room and of course since the update's been really good uh, way better over Ice Demon. But anyways, Tecton start, amazing. Skeletons, typically easy room. And then you end the raid before Ulm with Vanguards, which is perfect because of supplies. If you're trying to get into no prepping, Vanguards at the end of your raid is really, really nice. Just because you get all your supplies back pretty much before Ulm. Alright, Thieving Room was my first room of this raid. It looks like we're going to finish this room in under 3 minutes. Which is crazy. It used to take like, I, I feel it was like at least five minutes. All right, since we're on the last 500 rates for the series, I think it's fitting to start upgrading our ammo a bit. I, I plan on going for rune darts soon as well. We'll use dragon bolts. I don't really mind killing Vorkath for some more dragon bolts, but I'm short. So I'll start using it. What? Damn, I could hit a 60? Jesus. This is actually crazy that I can just hit a 60 auto. Well, <laughs> what? Dragon Bolts? Oh, shit. Woof. Nice. Good thing I uh, I knew that I was at a bad spot there. Thank you so much. Anyways, this is Raid 1125. Which means I can actually uh, start going for our next upgrade, which is the Torturer, man. Going to be retiring the uh, regular Amulet Fury. So what's next? What do we go for next at 1200? 1125, yeah. Next upgrade after that would be at 1200 KC. I decided we're going to revisit Armadale. Because we're going to upgrade the uh, Armadale Chaps to the Armadale Skirt. Fuck it. I'm not even going to piety Rigor Flick anymore at CBA. The kills aren't that much slower without piety or Rigor. But you get to stay here like two to three times longer. In like 35 kills this trip, I haven't got a single food drop, man. But who cares, I guess, because I have guttons. Yes, that was such a fat heal. Oh my god, guttons. First trip with the guttons, I got uh, 51 kills. I got zero food drops other than uh, these brew doses here. But yeah, really nice, really nice, man. I can slack off and still stay for quite a long time with no SGS or anything like that, so. Oh my god, good thing I have my recorder on. But yes, let's see how many kills we've done. 274, okay. Slightly lucky, slightly lucky. Hell yeah. I was having fun, actually. I was enjoying the demonics. All right, guys, I'm on the calcusource.com website, easy website, not sponsored, but uh, really useful for checking how much XP you got on certain items. So checking the XP for crafting based on what I got in my bank. So I already put in 12,000 bone glass. It's about 840k, looking good. And the total XP is 2.4 mil. That's enough to get me to over 93 crafting. Oh, here we go. Zena Enchant. Wow, that was so uh, so quick. Only took three uh, attempts to boost. Man, I feel like I get quite lucky with these. But there it is. Torture done. Torture done, man. You can't see the rapier difference now between Fury and Torture because I'm not overloaded. But I should be able to go from a 52 max to a 53 max with rapier though. When I'm overloaded. It is time. All this rune crafting has allowed me to use the scythe a lot. So it's time to learn some cool new strategies at raids with a scythe, particularly Tacton and at Ulm and probably Vanguards as well. I feel like with the buffed uh, reset range at Vanguards, even the scythe would be pretty interesting. But yeah, this would basically replace my bludgeon. Alright, here we go, boys. <laughs> Always the deck scrolls, man. Oh, what? Damn, two purples today. Wow, okay. It's been a bit. Here we go. 
Yo, dude, two deck scrolls today, bro. Back to back deck scrolls. I think it is now time to go for a new personal best. Our previous personal best was 1853 or 6, I believe. And we have now new site strategies for raids. And we also have a torture upgrade over the Fury. So yeah, I am expecting to be able to beat the time down by quite a lot. But unfortunately, uh, while I was going for speed runs, I uh, rage quit one of them and I accidentally forgot to pick up my dins. So yeah, we lost one. But luckily, I have four more. But dang, I, I was scared that I didn't have any more after that. Shout out to my friends for helping me scout enough raids to actually do this PB attempt. It took us about four hours of attempts and scouting to finally get a new PB. So we ended up... P being on this really nice layout here, Fasa, Crabs, Tecton, uh, Fispila, Agility. This is one of the standard fast layouts that you want to go for, for PBs. Now, there's a problem. I have bad Crabs. Uh, this layout, Crabs, is really easy to mess up and overall just takes longer to do than most of the Crab layouts, the other two. So it's really important that I got that sorted, but everything else, it's standard. For the Fossa, of course, I went with the good old Venge strat at the start, bombed it really hard. Uh, I also had a Phoenix necklace to go so I can uh, get back to high HP instantly without having to brew up because, you know, I already pre-potted my range. I have my Dragon Darts with me as well for this occasion, but Fossa went pretty decent. Damn it, shit crabs. Let's go. Here we go, here we go. So when you stun the crabs, they're on a timer, right? And if I stun the crabs perfectly on time, I should be able to hit all three crystals, the purple, blue, and black crystal back to back without having to re-stun the crabs. This is very important because if I have to re-stun in the middle of this, it's very easy that I mess it up completely and I waste like an extra 30 seconds to a minute. And I was able to do it perfect. Ah, oh, shit. Bad spawn, though. Oh, oh my god. Yes, really good spec. Two specs? Okay. Yes, oh my god. That was so good, dude. Couldn't have asked for much better. This is awesome, sub 8 minutes and I got to Ulm. So that means I have over 10 minutes to kill Ulm and still PB. I'm just gonna take this risk. Yes, this is awesome. That means that I don't have to worry about poison trail for a bit. Dang it. I was gonna set up the 7-3 real quick for one. No, and the burn. Dang it, man. Whatever, it's okay, it's okay. Oof. Let's go, man. PB. By a lot. Oh, almost sub 18 too. Damn, dude, we did it. So I just hit 94 Herbler recently, and I didn't think much of it other than like, you know, anti-venom plus for four Captain Zor. But a while ago, I did discover that anti-poison resistance actually persists while you're scouting. I don't know when they changed it, but they did. But it's really nice because that means I can pre-pot like an antidote and scout my raids and not have to bring like a Sanfu Serums or something, saving space. And Anti-Venom++ plus plus is nice because it actually lasts longer than Antidotes. Uh, I believe it's like 2 minutes and 30 seconds longer, which is good because sometimes Shamans might be towards the end of a raid that I found that's good. And it'll give me just enough time to make it all the way there. So it's worth it because I only use 2 doses an hour max. So yeah, it's really low cost on like scales and torso. So definitely worth it for me.
Just got another rune crafting level, but yeah, busy busting these runes out because uh, the scythe needs it. But it's working out good though. I am able to to upkeep. Damn, look at this new pet, bro, from Soul Wars. It is a very giant pet. Holy crap, it is very big. Oh, someone got a purple. Nice, actual purple. Oh, what? Damn, a scythe, dude. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen one in a while. Holy shit. Yo. Damn, son. Yo, grats on the scythe. Holy shit. First row of the day, scythe. Oh, hell yeah, boy. Tactical group freeze pog. Oh, the chest guard. Wait, you already have that, don't you? A dupe. Oh, it's a dupe. It's a dupey. Whoa, what the hell? 69.70. First blood. Oh. Perfect. Ah, that's cool, man. I just noticed uh, what the torture and just having this on, which isn't even like completely max strength, but I'm still already hitting 47, which is already two max hits higher than uh, Void. Whereas it was only one max hit with Fury. So I guess for TOB, uh, it's time to just switch over to normal melee gear, to be honest. Oh, uh. Uh. Oh my god. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you found this video to be enjoyable, consider giving it a like. We also have a friends chat. Feel free to join that if you want to hang out. And also, consider subscribing and ringing the bell. That way you will get all video notifications. And if you have Amazon Prime, feel free to subscribe on twitch.tv slash ricecup and you can financially support me for free through Amazon Prime. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys later.